What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to College Football Talk with Peter Burtnett. This is going to be parts three and four of my series in the video of in the video series of the road to the college football playoff. <clears throat> if you can't tell, a little under the weather, my voice is probably going to be a little bit scratchy in this video, but we're going to we're going to power through it and deliver you guys the road to the college football playoff for Washington in the first video and then coming out I think probably, you know, the following day whether I release this on Monday or Tuesday, the next day following that, I'll have the video on Texas Go Live. But if you want to enjoy this video and are interested to see more like this, please feel free to leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel so you're always seeing when I post, and turn on those post notifications so you're notified when I post. But without further ado, let's dive into the Texas Longhorns, the team that I think people before the season expected to have a shot at making the playoff, but maybe were hesitant because of the game against Alabama on the schedule. You know, you had teams like Kansas State and TCU, who are the two teams who represented the Big 12 in the championship game last year, and not even to mention their rivals, Oklahoma. But Texas starts out the season, and this was a little bit of a theme early on, and at times throughout the season was kind of a slow start against Rice, but they had a huge third quarter. I think they scored 21 in that quarter to pull away from the Owls. And then their big one. All of the teams that have made the college football playoff, as you've, as you've seen in this series, have had a big game. For Michigan, it was certainly the Ohio State game. For Alabama, I would say in terms of the games that they won, it was the SEC championship game. For for Washington, I talked about in the last video, that was, I guess for Washington, it was more so, it was probably two games. It was both of their games against Oregon, um, but especially the Pac-12 championship game. Um, because if they would have lost that first one, they would have been in the same position, I believe, that Oregon was, where if they win that game, they're in the playoff. So Texas, though, their big game, even before the season, was anticipated to be this one in Tuscaloosa. And it was it ended up being the biggest non-conference win of the season. I think there's not really too much of a debate for that. If Ohio State would have made the playoff and Notre Dame would have had a better season, there'd be an argument for that. But really, I don't think anything really comes close to touching Texas's win over Alabama. So it was a huge game for Quinn Ewers at quarterback, 349 yards, three touchdowns. And the defense also played a pivotal role as well, forcing two key turnovers. And the 10-point win in Tuscaloosa... I think I mentioned this in my Alabama video was the biggest that the Crimson Tide have suffered in the Nick Saban era because I think the the like two losses that they had the biggest home loss the two losses that they had in 07 to UL Monroe somehow and to LSU um, were both I think just by each by seven points definitely under ten so ten point loss was the biggest ever handed to the Crimson Tide during the Nick Saban era and so a huge win for Texas. I mean, ultimately, I think that was a moment where we knew that Texas was really back, or at least we thought. And then some questions kind of arose. You look at another slow start against Wyoming. I think that game was like 10-10 heading into maybe the fourth quarter. And, and again, then in the fourth quarter, though, they were able to get the offense going 21 points, I think unanswered in that game to pull away. And then, you know, they've been a little bit hot and cold. They have a wins of 26-plus against Baylor on the road and then against a good Kansas team at home in Austin, but a really good Jayhawks team um, that has continued to, to grow and improve. And I'm excited to see how they continue to do with Lance Leopold as long as he's there as head coach. Um, but then, then their rivalry game rolled around, and it was... It was a spectacle, as it always is, in the Cotton Bowl, the Red River rivalry, Red River showdown, whatever you want to call it, between Oklahoma and Texas at the Texas State Fair. And Texas looked to be in a good position, but it was an, ex it was an exciting back and forth game. And then Dylan Gabriel, who now is an Oregon Duck, which will be exciting to see as he plugs in for Bo Nix now, who finished as a Heisman finalist and has gone to the NFL to, to pursue that. So it'll be exciting to see Dylan Gabriel leading the Ducks offense next year. But back to Texas, you know, a late Dylan Gabriel drive to put Oklahoma ahead. And for the Sooners... Um, I'm trying to think up to this point if they had had a loss yet, but I, obviously after this, they, they suffered a couple losses that kind of put them out of the picture, the big one being to their rivals, Oklahoma State, uh, in, in the final bedlam as Big 12 opponents. So that was that was a big loss. Um, Texas did, um, you know, they erased the 10-point deficit, but overall... It was, it was a game that was kind of in their hands and then give up a late touchdown, a little too much time on the clock, and the Sooners get a big win. After that, though, Texas had somewhat smooth sailing. It was kind of kind of back and forth, actually. It was like, it was 
you know, they had a dominant win over BYU and then a closed regular season against Texas Tech and in the Big 12 championship against Oklahoma State. But then they had close wins. They had a, a Jade Barron uh, pass breakup to seal a narrow 31-24 win at Houston. A, a CJ, CJ Baxter touchdown run was also key. They were playing that one without Quinn Ewers in the second half. Malik Murphy stepped, stepped up well in the role for Ewers while, while the starting QB was out. Um, but I think they definitely missed it was a quarterback and, and some of the other close W's. They held off Kansas State when the Wildcats went for it on fourth down in overtime after Texas had gone ahead on a field goal. That game ended 33 to 30 at TCU. They nearly lost the 26 to six lead. They ended up holding on for a 29 to six win. And then at Iowa State, who I think I think had a good season. I think they were a little underrated seven and five. Um, I think doesn't really tell how their season was because they really they started out really slow losing at home in like a 10-7 loss to to Ohio and obviously losing to the the rival Hawkeyes as well good season for the Cyclones but regardless the Texas team it's kind of like Alabama you know both of the teams that are in the playoff that have one loss have had games where you know they they make the plays that they need to to get the job done um, aside from for Alabama, the game against Texas, and aside for, for Texas, aside from the game against Oklahoma. So Texas make the, makes the plays that they need to. They have a really strong defense. And like I said in the previous videos in this series, it'll, you know, I'll, I'll really dive into the, the pivotal players on that defense. You know, this series has been more focusing on the key moments, the road to the college football playoff. But for Texas, it's been... You know, it started out, you know, pretty much right away, week two, with that huge win in Tuscaloosa. Had a little bit of, of wavering here and there. They dropped the game to Oklahoma. And, and going into the final week, much like Alabama, they're sitting at seven. Alabama sitting at eight. You know, pretty pretty far out of the playoff race. But they had some, you know, really, I mean, I would say they had some results go their way. But more so, it was just either way you knew Oregon or Washington was going to fall. And, you know, came down to Florida State. And Texas always always held the trump card over Alabama. So if I couldn't have really seen a picture where you put in Florida State and Alabama, believe out Texas. Um, so once they took care of business in that noon window against the against Oklahoma State comfortably, they really dominated. I think they left little doubt that they deserve to be in the playoff. But that's it for this video of College Football Talk. If you've enjoyed, please feel free again to leave a like, consider subscribing to the channel, turn those post notifications so you're always up to date. Thank you so much for watching College Football Talk. I'm your host, Peter Burnett, signing out. Peace.